There we go. Good. Morning, Erica. How are you? Hold on a second. I can't really hear you. Okay. Okay, there we go. My computer volume. I could barely hear you. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Great to have you on the call this morning. Thank you. All righty. Well, uh, we'll have folks uh, just getting on the call. It's, it is 7 o'clock, and I do want to get started. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rich Block, and you are on the Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group uh, general meeting call. Uh, this call happens every other week uh, at 7 o'clock Pacific. Uh, you should have in front of you our agenda for the day, and uh, just as always, uh, the first thing that we'd like to do is uh, remind everyone about our antitrust policy, and so I'll show you our, our policy here. Uh, it, sec, uh, effectively, it says, uh, in so many words, be a good person. And that's what that's really all about. But pl please feel free to read through this document, uh, as well as the full antitrust uh, link uh, here if you want to get into the details of that. Um, normally, I'll ask uh, folks to, uh, I'll, I'll ask someone to, to do note taking. Uh, today is kind of a light agenda, so I think I'll cover note taking myself. Uh, but for those that uh, have taken notes for for us in the past, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, what usually what we we like to do is, if you're new on the call, to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your interest in blockchain technologies and healthcare, and maybe a little bit about uh, your company and where you're calling in from. Uh, is there anyone on the call that would like to introduce themselves? Hi, Rich. This is Susan Ramanot, CEO of Spiritus Partners. Uh, I'm joined by my CTO, Bob Clint. Uh, we've been active in uh, blockchain and healthcare for the better part of three years. Uh, we are concerned with uh, the safety, quality, and compliance of medical devices over their operating life. Um, quite active in the community internationally and happy to join the group today. Oh, good morning. Great. And where, you, where is Spiritus located? Uh, we're outside of Philadelphia, although we just spent two years uh, living in Edinburgh, uh, working with the National Health Service over there. We have a development center in Edinburgh with uh, grants uh, provided by the Scottish government. So back in the States, pursuing uh, strong agendas with uh, some leading U.S. health systems, as well as uh, up in Ontario, Canada. Oh, outstanding. Well, great to have you, Susan. You don't have a Scottish accent, so... <laughs> no, more Philly. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. East Coast, exactly. Uh, well, great to have you and Bob on the call. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. And uh, just as a kind of a, a kind of a quick quick overview, if you're not familiar with the HC Sig, uh, we're an international organization of over a thousand members uh, with interests uh, in uh, professional interests in the healthcare space. And then, sort of, I always like to say we're sort of pre-filtered again uh, with uh, interests in using blockchain technologies in healthcare. And so uh, as a member of this group, and it is an open, uh, 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 because Hyperledger and Linux Foundation are all open source, we're also uh, open community, um, which means that those over a thousand members are, are certainly available to you and your organization uh, as a resource uh, to, to, to see fit. And so feel free to communicate with them uh, however you may want. Uh, usually, uh, we, we go through either email or rocket chat, which is um, uh, sort of a real-time chat similar to, uh, oh gosh, now I just forgot what it's called. Um, it's uh, a... It's Slack. like Slack. Slack, yes, thank you. <laughs> I, I saw it there and I just couldn't, couldn't remember. Yeah, exactly. It's just like Slack. Um, so, uh, so yeah, absolutely. And again, thanks for joining us on the call today. Uh, great to have you. Thank you, and I see Adrian on the call. So, hi, Adrian. Hello. Uh, and yeah, and Adrian is one of our one of our uh, regulars, more or less. So, good morning, Adrian. Glad to have you on the call. All right. I've been mostly MIA. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> All righty. Um, any anyone else want to introduce themselves? Uh, the, the rest of the folks on the call are, are more or less folks that I'm familiar with or, or are regulars, uh, certainly. Uh, so uh, if, if, uh, if that said, let's, let's move forward. Um, so we do want to go through a little bit on, <clears throat> excuse me, on community announcements. 
Um, I just re recently, and this is very new, uh, received a, a, a note through LinkedIn. Uh, there's an organization on the East Coast that is looking for a full-time or contract position with someone uh, capable of doing uh, sawtooth development. Um, and uh, the, the only real stipulation is they, it has to be U.S.-based. Um, and uh, really that's the extent of it. I don't know particularly if this is uh, within the healthcare space or not. Um, and it just came to be, I think it was uh, yesterday afternoon. And so um, I, I offered to sort of post that here. Um, and so if you are interested, please feel free to contact me either via email or through the Rocket Jack channel. And I'd be happy to sort of redirect you and connect you with that, uh, that person. Um, the reason why I post this through community announcements is it's an, it's an interesting uh, opportunity uh, with a very specific need uh, uh, looking for someone with sawtooth uh, development experience. Uh, and for those folks that aren't necessarily familiar with sawtooth uh, in the Hyperledger sort of uh, uh, spectrum of, of uh, uh, frameworks, most of us are familiar with fabric. Uh, generally speaking, the sort of the next a uh, full stack uh, implementation would be Sawtooth. Sawtooth being provided by Intel, uh, mostly worked by Intel and sort of donated to the, the Hyperledger group. Um, and uh, just as an aside, uh, initially uh, Sawtooth had a, uh, a dependency on the Intel chipset, uh, the SGS chipset functionality, um, which is since been removed. So you do not need to have Intel chipsets to use Sawtooth. Uh, and again, if, if you you or anyone is interested in sort of pursuing this, feel free to contact me um, after the fact, uh, and I'd be happy to make uh, introductions. Uh, does anyone else have any uh, community announcements that they'd like to, to talk through? All righty. Well, I, I have a question for, for the group, the Adrian. Sure, Adrian, um, go ahead. I'm, I'm, as you guys may know, I'm heavily involved in self-sovereign identity uh, work, uh, particularly as it relates to credentials and uh, for clinicians and uh, agents that uh, are controlled or have a, a, a fiduciary relationship to patients. And there are uh, two uh, Two industry consortia, uh, one of them the Decentralized Identity Foundation and the other one the Hyperledger Indie uh, groups um, with a lot of overlapping membership uh, that are in these two industry consortia are, are both implementing uh, common standards that, uh, that we work on, uh, you know, from W3C uh, specifically. And so, uh, as you guys probably know, you know, my, my work is uses the healthcare use case to sort of inform these standards and interact with the, uh, Hyperledger in the NDIF, uh, and DIF, uh, DIF groups. So my question was just broadly, uh, the reason I joined the call partly is to see if that has come up here, if any of the stuff that I just mentioned having to do with basically blockchain identity and credentials uh, for patients and for uh, clinicians, uh, if that is something of interest and in particular to tell people here that um, there is a very active discussion right now in terms of uh, what's the difference between a hub and an agent. And, uh, uh, and it sort of has to do with the kind of code and, and practices that uh, the two blockchain groups are, are promoting, again, in a very friendly and cooperative way. This is not really a competition so much as, a, as a, a search for understanding of, you know, how do we want to use blockchain identity, uh, uh, you know, commercially. Yeah, so, uh, so 
you, you bring up a good point regarding uh, self-sovereign identity. Uh, of course, uh, f f within the Hyperledger, uh, Indy is sort of considered the, the, the you know, the, the, the uh, framework of choice for that. Uh, Indy is uh, provided by um, uh, the, uh, uh, oh, good goodness, I am, I am not sovereign. thinking. Sovereign. Sovereign Foundation. Sovereign Foundation. Thank, Foundation. Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, and in fact, uh, we do have occasionally uh, projects come through that are exercising SSI. Um, I could tell you uh, one of the subgroups, uh, which is a healthcare interoperability subgroup that is uh, getting spun up through Stephen Elliott, there has been some discussions about uh, making use of SSI within uh, the use cases that they're developing. Um, so that may be a, a sort of a, a consideration they may want uh, to, to, to look at. Uh, I also, uh, since we don't really have a subgroup that is 100% focused on SSI, you know, it, the, the other option to consider would be, uh, if you're interested, uh, we could we could put a request out to the full membership and try to culminate uh, uh, a subgroup around SSI use cases um, and develop, a, you know, develop a project uh, that that really focuses on exercising SSI fully. Uh, and again, like I said, I know that our, our HIS subgroup, um, our healthcare interoperability subgroup, really has that, uh, is considering that peripherally, but I don't think that's going to be a focal. Um, as well, uh, and Wendy will, will, can talk a little bit about this, where we have a, a, a development team that's looking at use cases, and so it might also be an opportunity for, uh, for us to think about how SSI might be used as we develop our use cases. And, uh, and I'll have Wendy talk a little bit later uh, as we get through some of our ad hoc uh, team updates, but that may also be a way that you might want to find a way to sort of uh, interact and uh, develop out SSI thoughts as well. Hey, Rich, this is Wendy, and I'm happy to talk about that later. I um, wanted to add a community announcement. Um, there will be a HIMSS 20 blockchain symposium. I think it will be in February of next year and there will be an opening for calls for proposals uh, for presentations uh, that will start Monday, August 26th and close on Monday, September 23rd. And it would be lovely to see submissions from this group. Oh, outstanding! So, so Wendy, you and I let's let's craft an email to go out to the full full membership, uh, so that we can sort of document that and and ex and get that out to everybody. Oh, uh, perfect! And just as an aside, I I think uh, I think I'm I, I was sort of roped <laughs> roped into speaking uh, at Hims for next year. Uh, awesome. Okay. And, and I don't know the details yet, um, <laughs> so. I just, I, I think I, I'm somehow committed to, to doing that. I, and I don't know details, honestly. It'll, obviously, uh, I'll be speaking on the topic of, of, of health care and, and blockchain sure. technology and health care. Uh, but but uh, what you're describing, uh, I'd like to find a way to, to see if there's a way we can sort of interleave that as well. Uh, and that would be a, a good way to, to sort of make double use of, of my time there. So we'll, well talk yeah, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that this symposium is going to take place at the global conference or not. Uh, ah, okay. So I they, last year, well, earlier in 2019, there was a separate symposium uh, for blockchain. I'm not sure exactly how it will be structured, but I do know that there is a call for proposals coming up, and I just wanted to get everyone start thinking about that so that they would be ready to submit a proposal. Okay. Yeah, because uh, this past year we had uh, sort of the day preceding was was a full day of uh, blockchain uh, events, and it was outstanding. Uh, David, okay. as you know, David holding uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, I thought I think chairs that or co-chairs okay. it. Uh, and yeah, and they did. Yeah, they did a fantastic job. And I boy, I'd love to see that happen again. But uh, I don't. I honestly don't know details. And again. I know I, I'm somehow participating in that. I just don't know the details of it so far. Fair enough. Okay, we'll talk offline. Awesome. Um, all righty. Uh, any other uh, announcements anyone would like to make? Okay, well, let's move into subgroups. Uh, and then for those of you that are newer to the call, so the way that uh, this organization uh, works is 
Uh, our SIG is structured in tiers, and so the top tier is general meeting, which is really a, uh, governance uh, and, and administration, and that's kind of what we're talking through today. It's sort of a roll-up of the work that's being done, sort of boots on the ground. Uh, and from that uh, perspective, we have subgroups and uh, ad hoc teams. Uh, subgroups are effectively formalized around uh, areas of interest, and, and in healthcare, we generally think about sort of the triad where we have payer, patient, provider, uh, and that's sort of spin-outs from there where, where the focal for those use cases uh, get exercised uh, in, in a smaller team uh, of people that are very focused on, on specific use cases. Uh, and then ad hoc teams uh, generally are where we have uh, sort of the genesis of ideas uh, uh, come, come forward. Sometimes they will spin into a subgroup. Uh, sometimes they are very specifically directed actions. Um, and so it, it's, it's a little bit more, again, it's a focused team uh, out of the larger uh, membership group. Uh, and they, they are tasked with some very specific activities. So as far as our subgroups go, up, updates go, uh, for patient member subgroup, that's led by uh, Dennis Kuskin out of Switzerland. Uh, he's on vacation. I think he's in Turkey at the moment, uh, and I wished him well. Uh, he did pass along an update, uh, and so that update is uh, in the agenda. Uh, so last week, their meeting, uh, they talked about the permissions layer uh, and their data and process side, and uh, they're, they're sort of uh, rescoping their patient recruitment component. Uh, and uh, and planning to move forward with their solution. Um, so for anyone that's interested in uh, in that patient member subgroup, uh, Dennis is doing a great job of uh, sort of reinvigorating and, and uh, pivoting that subgroup uh, away from uh, a little bit different work that we had done uh, earlier this year and late last year. Um, and uh, I. I, they're, they meet every opposite week that we meet. Uh, so we meet every Friday at seven. They meet an alternate Friday at, I believe, nine o'clock in the morning Pacific. So feel free to uh, either contact me for details or go up to our, it's up to the website and the wiki and you'll find uh, the, the patient member subgroup details for, for, uh, for dialing in uh, through that subgroup as well. Um, Anyone from the, the patient subgroup on the call today that uh, would like to add to that? Hello, uh, I joined a little bit late. This is Patricia. Good morning, um, Patricia. Hi, how are you? Um, I don't have a lot to add to that, but I know I saw my name there, Patty. That's- Oh, uh, that's yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, that's how people call me. <laughs> okay. I, I go by Patty, and he wrote it right, even though it looks weird. Um, so I, I was actually, I just came back from vacation. So I have been communicating with Denise via email, and um, he gave me some assignments. So we're 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 working on on this together. Um, and but at this point, I did miss the last uh, week's meeting. Uh, I was uh, with family somewhere in Europe, in Copenhagen, and um, I will. Uh, I don't have a lot to report except that we, as he wrote there, I think he wrote it here that we are looking at the um clinical trials did he write that no uh, he did not write that there no no but that's good Th thanks for the yeah thanks for the update on that uh, is there yeah, anything so, yeah, so we're ahead. looking at a, at a use case uh, involving clinical trials and patient recruitment excellent okay uh well thanks patricia or or, or patty patty <laughs> patty is fine <laughs> Thank i'm you. actually gonna re i'm gonna rename it here Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Uh, well, great to have you back from vacation, and, and thank you for the update as well. <laughs> um, so uh, for our payer subgroup, uh, which is focusing, of course, on, on the payer side of the equation, uh, Ravish Devan, uh, uh, and I believe he's uh, out of the East Coast, uh, is, uh, I did not receive an update from him. Uh, they, they met recently, uh, and of course, their focus has been on uh, developing uh, something of a, of, a, of a white paper as it relates to uh, trying to understand where blockchain technologies uh, in healthcare sort of fits in, sort of a, a, a flow chart of sorts. Uh, so that's the work that they've been, been, they've been working on. Uh, and then for uh, the healthcare interoperability subgroup, uh, Stephen's usually on our call, and I don't necessarily see him uh, this morning, uh, but they, this is our newest subgroup, and uh, Stephen is in process of, uh, of building that out. Uh, the, 
our intent is to get that uh, spun up very soon. Uh, I do know that Stephen is currently uh, working a uh, uh, Cyber SBIR activity. Uh, and actually, it's just down uh, down an old business. We can get to that in just a moment. So I know he's been sidetracked a little bit on, on uh, another healthcare opportunity. Uh, so uh, we'll continue to give you an updates uh, on availability for uh, uh, getting more involved in that subgroup. Again, if uh, if you see interest in uh, participating in, in sort of this interoperability subgroup, uh, let me know and I can redirect you to Steve and make introductions uh, as that gets built out. Uh, I'm particularly excited about uh, Stephen's uh, work in the subgroup, particularly because uh, this is, uh, generally speaking, our subgroups are top-down, where we're looking at sort of application-level uh, solutions. Uh, Stephen's looking at working this bottom-up, which is providing services so that other uh, organizations can make use of these layers on top of uh, Hyperledger uh, frameworks. Uh, so these are abstraction layers that will make it a lot easier for the sake of interoperability across a much broader spectrum of use cases. Uh, and so, um, so I'm, I'm really excited to see this uh, move forward. Uh, any other comments or questions about our subgroup updates? Okay, well, let's get into our updates for our ad hoc teams. Uh, so Ravish also uh, leads our wiki redesign team. Um, so uh, the, the uh, wiki that we're looking at and working at right now is, is Confluence. Uh, this is, we, tr we made a transition uh, within Hyperledger uh, earlier this year. Uh, and I, this, is just, this is just an ongoing thing. And so I, I always want to express this to, to membership. Uh, I'm always very interested to find someone within uh, our membership uh, team that has an interest in, uh, in uh, design and has some expertise in using Confluence, uh, which, is, which is the wiki tool of choice here, uh, to help us continually sort of refine uh, our wiki. And, uh, and the value to that goes to, if you're interested, uh, really is uh, looking at not only redesign for, uh, for, for our SIG, but uh, this is an open sort of invitation to help look at working across multiple SIGs and work groups within hyperledger.org uh, .org proper. Uh, and the reason for that is we are growing at a phenomenal rate, uh, understandably, um, and we're always looking for ways to improve uh, member engagement, uh, particularly new members who uh, are new to the community uh, that may come to us by way of the healthcare SIG or maybe some of the other SIGs. Uh, my personal interest is that they have the opportunity to sort of move across the special interest groups or across the working groups uh, in a very fluid and facile way without having to sort of re-understand or reinterpret the structure of each and individual SIG. Um, and so that's kind of, it's a very tall order. And so I keep this sort of question open to anyone that uh, is in our community that has the interest in helping to develop that. It's a very, it's a very large ask. Uh, and Ravish to date has, has been helpful in making that happen. Uh, of course, you know, I, we're still sort of, you know, grasping for that brass ring. And so, um, so that's open to anyone on the call who would like to participate in that. Um, so as well, our, we have an academic research team uh, that um, uh, sort of moves forward uh, in fits and starts, uh, just depending on where uh, our, our sort of priorities happen to be and where our resources are. Adrian Berg is our lead on this. Uh, Adrian has been off on, uh, on sabbatical. I think he's back as of maybe a week or so ago. Uh, but the purpose of our, our academic research team is really to focus on understanding how we can engage academia in really understanding uh, uh, how, to, how to sort of uh, communicate or educate the healthcare community uh, in the use of blockchain technologies in a way that is done objectively and through, through more of a peer-reviewed uh, mechanism, which is what uh, healthcare expects. And, and the, the rationale behind that is healthcare and academia so, are so tightly wedded uh, that in a lot of uh, healthcare communities uh, and healthcare systems, what, what they look for is real evidence that uh, uh, whatever the technology or, or new uh, methodology would be, that it's, it's already sort of, it's been proven to some degree or exercised in, in a very uh, sort of methodical and, and proven way. Uh, and, and of course, that's done usually typically through peer-reviewed journals. 
uh, academic or scholarly articles and so forth. And that's the really, that's sort of the, the genesis for this academic research team. Uh, I'll also mention that this, uh, the, the notion of academic involvement is something that's happening at a much uh, higher level uh, for the, the organization and proper. And so I'm, I'm excited to see that uh, some of the work that we did sort of preliminarily here through this research team has sort of propagated up uh, into, uh, into, into the hyperledger leadership uh, group. Uh, and so I suspect we'll, we'll continue to get some traction going forward in that respect. Okay, uh, Wendy, do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, the use case development team? Sure, and I am pleased to see some of our members on the call today. So uh, we had a fantastic kickoff meeting on uh, July 11th and determined how we would approach use cases. I think it's important to establish to the larger community that the term use case um, means different things to different people and it's important to be precise in the way that we describe the activities that we're working on. So, uh, yes, and thank you for pulling up that paper. I have read it several times now, and I, I really think it's a must read for anyone who would like to describe their activities yeah. on a particular case. So, so, so yes, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll underline that with a giant highlighter. This is an outstanding paper, and, and I mean, absolutely. Uh, it's a great read, and it really is absolutely educational for anyone and this is even outside the context of blockchain. It's just, it's a great story, uh, a great way to sort of understand what, what use cases really are all about. Excellent, yes, and thank you for emphasizing that. Uh, so after uh, we met and determined uh, that um, we talked through the differences between use cases and case studies and determined that we would write up um, descriptions of use cases, which is more based on potential than reliance on actual evidence. I reached out to the Hyperledger leadership because uh, I realized that it probably isn't appropriate for us to just start out and create something on our own. Um, since we're part of the Hyperledger group, I wanted to find out from the leadership whether there was a particular template they wanted us to use, a particular format, um, where we could capitalize on some of the Hyperledger publications and exposure in order to get the word out about the work that we're doing and about any end products that we have. And they um, have responded, but I've been out of the office for a few days and since I emailed, so I am now catching up with them to find out more. I think it will be important for us to integrate uh, with the uh, Hyperledger expectations, again, to maximize the use. And so I hope to get more and then uh, submit that information back to this team, as well as let the larger uh, special interest group know what we're working on to see if we can get some additional interest and support for writing these products. Yeah, outstanding job, Wendy, and thank you for, for driving this. Uh, and the meeting was really well done, uh, and you did a great job facilitating it. So uh, for anyone that's interested, you know, the, the sort of stepping back, the bigger picture here is uh, we've, we've come to come to the realization that uh, there are uh, folks in the healthcare community that are very uh, new to uh, uh, understanding hyperledger technologies and and as it may turn out uh, use cases are a great way to sort of learn how uh, how these technologies may be implemented and I always think in terms of uh, you know the, the notion there's a real there's a real power and strength in learning in context uh, and use cases uh, in some cases serve that purpose very well so, uh, so yeah, so this is a great team that's coming together and thank you, Wendy, for making that happen. Uh, I, I imagine this is gonna be a good fit going forward because this will be sort of a, uh, very likely in some cases, sort of that first level experience for, for folks in the healthcare space, just trying to understand, uh, answer the question, what are these blockchain technologies that everyone's talking about? Uh, and this, is, this may uh, certainly be that sort of a very initial learning effort. And so I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to, to have us provide those sorts of resources to, uh, to folks uh, new to the technology suite. Great, and thank you for adding to that discussion. Yeah, uh, and, and again, that the paper, uh, that that's really is an outstanding paper, uh, that the blockchain uh, um, uh, case studies paper, that it really is 
very valuable. And thanks for sort of down selecting that because that that was uh, an excellent read. Um, any other comments or questions about our updates for our ad hoc teams? And again, if there's, you know, if you have an idea, uh, again, uh, we could crowdsource this within the community here. And so uh, if, you know, you have a thought or an idea about how uh, something that you want to sort of pursue uh, and you're sort of thinking uh, independently like, well, gee, this might be an interesting idea for myself, but I don't know anyone else that that has the same sort of uh, sort of passion around it. It's very likely that out of those over a thousand folks or so uh, that you, you uh, probably are not alone. And so please uh, feel free to just bring up the, the notion and we could find uh, a sort of crowdsource that find, find folks to, to work with you on, on your ideas. Okay, any thoughts or comments going forward? Okay, well, let's get into some old business and uh, new business, and we really don't have a whole lot of information uh, uh, to, to, to go over. Uh, but in short, uh, I think I had mentioned this before when I was uh, talking about Stephen Elliott's work uh, with the Healthcare and Operating Subgroup. Uh, we have, uh, and it's just coming to a close, so it's, this is probably the very tail end. Uh, but we did have, uh, do have an HHS, uh, and it's a it's a, a cumulative HHS NIH, NIH uh, grant opportunity utilizing blockchain technologies in the healthcare space, uh, and this is, uh, uh, I think it's it's a STTR, uh, what what I call a SIDR, and also a SIBR, S B I R. These are uh, generally speaking small business opportunities, and I believe small business is limited to 150 persons or less. Uh, it is U.S. based, uh, and a sitter STTR is uh, is a very similar mechanism, but it also needs to incorporate an academic institution. So a SIBR is a small business uh, opportunity. A sitter is a small business opportunity uh, in collaboration with a, an educational institution. Uh, generally speaking, it's a university or or college. Um, and uh, I could tell you, uh, I, I've worked uh, many of these, uh, that the, the timeline for these are always in, incredibly short. Uh, and so the notion, generally speaking, is that if you happen to be working in this space where the opportunity comes up, you're good to go, particularly if you already have academic sort of ties uh, with folks that are doing similar work, uh, you're, you're doubly good to go. Uh, otherwise, it's just very hard to, to respond uh, to, particularly a, a TTR or a sitter. Um, Sibbers are a little bit easier because they're they're a little bit more independent. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, I'm hoping to get some feedback from Stephen because I know they're working uh, through his organization. They're working uh, this as a Sibber Sibber opportunity, and so um, uh, yeah, like I said, I I think he's probably heads bit heads down even today working this issue. So we're gonna kind of loop him back in. Uh, well, I'll just say rope him back in and have them report out on the work that they've done uh, against this. Um, as far as any new business goes, uh, we did report out, so so we're obligated through the special interest group uh, to report out on a quarterly basis, uh, just sort of the overall health and direction of our special interest group. Uh, that's publicly available, and so our quarterly report is available here, if you feel free, uh, and feel free to read through it. Uh, we've had a great opportunity uh, to sort of grow, again, this organization. Uh, I do always like to call out uh, a special area of merit, and uh, and I, I'll just I'm going to put poor Wendy on the spot here. A special merit goes to to uh, to Wendy Charles for helping to really uh, move this uh, the special interest group forward. Uh, for those of you that aren't quite familiar yet with uh, Wendy's uh, blockchain article citations document, she she very very uh, thankfully provided uh, a, an amazing resource uh, for blockchain articles. It's it's well over 100 physical pages, uh, and it's a great resource for the special interest group, uh, as well as, and you heard from uh, from Wendy just a little while ago that she also kicked yeah. off our use case team uh, for uh, for the HC SIG as well. Uh, and, and we also uh, were very lucky to have quite a number of speakers uh, come and speak for uh, in front of uh, general membership, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very much thankful for, for that, those folks as well. So feel free to read through this. We do this on a quarterly basis. It's an obligation that we have. Uh, happy to do it, and it really gives us sort of a running status. And of course, we keep we keep all of our quarterly reports. Uh, I'll sort of point it out over here, uh, queued so that you can sort of get sort of a continuing understanding of where where the uh, special interest group 
uh, where the special interest group has been and where it plans to go moving forward. Uh, and, and that's a great segue into really kind of the, the a general roll up uh, of where you uh, would like to see the special interest group, uh, special interest group go uh, moving forward. Uh, I always like to open this up and this is an ongoing question uh, and um, it really speaks to where membership as a whole sees value in moving the special interest group forward. Uh, if you don't see value in the existing special uh, uh, subgroups, you're always welcome to spin one up and I'm happy to facilitate that as, as, as well as our ad hoc teams. Uh, ad hoc teams, like generally speaking, as I mentioned before, are a little bit more lighter weight. They don't have the kind of uh, overhead that uh, subgroups have, um, but can graduate into a subgroup if, if, uh, if that sort of infrastructure is needed. Um, so that, that's sort of it for, for the week. Um, I, I'll open it up to, to uh, discussion, conversation. Um, if there's anything that people have uh, seen over the past week or two uh, in uh, in communications or in the media as it relates to uh, 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 hyperledger or blockchain technologies in general in the healthcare space, uh, I'm opening it up for discussion. Oh my, it's mighty quiet. Hi, <laughs> hi, hi, Rich. This this is Alicia. Yes, Alicia. Um, so one of the, so one of the things that I see, and I, you know, as you know, I'm involved in the um, uh, a lot of the following startups here in Seattle, uh, and I kind of help uh, people understand the healthcare system in order to get into um, doing startups in, in in here in the Seattle area, and I haven't seen anything like this or information like, for example, doing something. Um, to inform some of these people that are working on helping with healthcare uh, in Cambia Grove. Um, so a lot of, I, I think that a lot of people are not very familiar with it and including me, you know, as, as we talked that we got, that I got involved as you invited me. Um, and I think that there is a lot of opportunity to actually get a lot of people involved and interested in this space. Yeah, so 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 you're right. So uh, just sort of a, as a quick background, or Alicia and I know know each other by way of Cambria Grove, uh, which uh, so so what's the best way to describe Cambria Grove? Are there, uh, Cambria Grove is actually Cambria Grove is actually actually they come out of insurance, uh, which is a very smart thing to do. They created this healthcare incubator for healthcare. Uh, to allow entrepreneurs to come in and take uh, and take, uh, technicians and people in in uh, the software industry and you know uh, computers and things like that to actually come into into there and try to solve. They bring they bring panels of all kind of things in healthcare from providers to payers to um, uh, regulatory uh, people and they bring them in and actually teach people about healthcare. Um, but a lot of the times they also do startups um, competitions where they bring a problem um, into, the, you know, into the space uh, to present it to entrepreneurs to see how they can come up with solutions. So it's yeah. pretty much uh, an incubator. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. I, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, Cambria Grove is is sponsored by. Uh, it's a fairly large pair, and I just don't remember who that pair happens to be. Yeah, they are associated, I think, with uh, uh, Primera or or Providence. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, and I'm and I'm. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on my my my. my yeah, I'm on my phone right now. Going. Yeah, who are they? Who are they? Yeah, but anyway, you. you yeah, you get you. If any yeah, go ahead. It's interesting in looking at it is cambiagrove.com and you can actually look in there and there are, I mean, over 400 uh, startups that they can list. A lot of people getting into healthcare. Yeah, and you gave you gave a very good uh, description of uh, of the, uh, the 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 facility, and it's a wonderful facility here in the Seattle area. 
I think they're also uh, represented uh, in, in the Portland area as well. Um, and again, I'd have to sort of follow up on that, but I do, I do know that they're part actually, of a- Actually, yeah, they, they're actually even starting incubators in other places like Salt Lake City is the next place they're going to expand. And they're, okay. I think that their intention, intention is to expand to other places. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, well, that's good to know. Very good to know. Well, thanks for that, Alicia. Yeah, um, it would be great if we can find ways to, to sort of uh, get ourselves more uh, sort of integrated in other opportunities, uh, both here in the U.S. and elsewhere. Uh, I, I'm in, currently in conversation with uh, uh, um, one of the editors, uh, I think it may be the editor-in-chief for a blockchain uh, and health, I think it's called Blockchain and Healthcare Today, and I think, Wendy, I, I may have CC'd you on that, and so please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and I, uh, I believe her name is uh, Rory or Tori. Yeah, um, Tori Sinaj. Thank you, uh, Wendy. And so we're going to try to get Tori to come and speak uh, in front of a uh, membership uh, in the next few weeks or so. Uh, and part of that really is to, to, to expand this special interest group into various other aspects of, of, the, of the community, the healthcare uh, community, as it relates to blockchain technologies. Uh, and it's going to be reflexive because that way uh, they, can, they can also see some value in, uh, in, in uh, serving uh, this special interest group because uh, our, our audiences are very, very similar. And um, so that's kind of what we're hoping to do is continue to grow into special areas where we maybe haven't uh, had an opportunity to do so uh, in the past. Um, Rich, uh, Rich, this is Susan yeah. on that yes, Susan. point. Um, uh, first, I just was named to the editorial board of Blockchain and Healthcare today. I um, started talking with Tori some three years ago, um, made recommendations to about a variety of academics and others that are on the board. So uh, I think that's an important initiative. Because we're focused on medical devices, um, I, I have a view to this um, in terms of overlapping agendas, and I, I don't have a presumption about where things are among your thousand members who's participating, uh, but we're seeing overlapping agendas and trying to make sure we're introducing folks to one another, um, and particularly around standards, uh, whether it's standards for blockchain, uh, taking advantage of standards that are, are already developed uh, in healthcare around uh, data sharing, more importantly, uh, initiatives that propose to develop standards for uh, blockchain in healthcare. So I'm thinking specifically of, of um, GS1, uh, which is one of the uh, providers of unique device identifiers, but more generally a standards uh, entity, membership-based global, um, that has uh, product um, data and standards, location standards and the like that are widely used across industries, very important around supply chain. Uh, GS1, uh, I know the principles there. They certainly are concerned that uh, uh, communities take advantage of the standards that they have. IEEE has uh, mounted an initiative around uh, clinical IoT and developing standards there. There's participation, as you might imagine, from uh, manufacturers, communities like this one, interested uh, not just around medical devices, but pharma as well. Um, likewise, um, on this, the issue of um, medical devices and software, AMI, the Association, American Association for Adva uh, Advanced uh, Medical Instrumentation, has gotten together with the Underwriters Labs, UL, to issue standards around handling of AI and ML and cybersecurity. Uh, the FDA is... Uh, keen to have uh, frameworks and standards there. Um, these uh, bodies and or uh, organizations uh, like yours, very decentralized, people come and go, but very much overlapping agendas. And, and I, I really think that uh, it's important that uh, the hyperledger community and particularly the SIG uh, be connected to that as well. So there are specific individuals. Um, I can provide you names separately. Um, you are either recognize them as already participating or um, certainly could provide introductions. Oh, yeah. E excellent, Susan. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we would love to be able to, to sort of engage uh, with these other organizations um, and in part, uh, for, if for nothing else, uh, to make it educational so that our membership has even the understanding that, that these standards bodies are in place or are in formation. 
uh, I would argue that uh, probably uh, many people, uh, at least our membership, are are still generally, uh, well, I'll, I'll speak for some percentage of them anyway, are still fairly new to the organization as it relates to uh, uh, how these technologies are applied in the healthcare space, and you know, and I would I would suspect that the notion of standards are probably uh, haven't yet fully been understood or considered, and so it would be great to educate folks or have the opportunity to provide education for folks uh, and uh, showcase different organizations here through uh, through uh, through this uh, general meeting forum, uh, and if people you know you know look forward to finding uh, a way to, to work with standards bodies or to uh, certainly to just understand that they exist, this would be a great opportunity for us to do so. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to find a, a way to connect Susan and maybe talk more about this and, uh, and, and then hopefully queue up some, some uh, speakers so, so we might be able to showcase some of these. Uh, GS1 has been, I think we have GS1 speaking uh, not in this special interest group, but in another, uh, I believe it might be social impact special interest group, and I think that's happening next month. Uh, and uh, they, they aren't necessarily talking about uh, healthcare, but I did speak with, uh, I forgot the gentleman who's uh, from GS1. Uh, the notion is that we may uh, be engaging GS1 to come speak to, to this uh, special interest group to talk about uh, what they are, what they are talking, uh, what they are thinking about in terms of um, uh, supply chain as it relates to the healthcare community. Um, but outside of that, you know, uh, I, you know, it would be great to learn more about where other standard bodies uh, exist and how we might be able to engage them. That would be fantastic. Yeah, so happy to provide that. I've spoken to GS1's uh, big event uh, the last two years, uh, just a month ago. So I, I certainly know the key players there, and it is a global organization. Um, the IEEE uh, initiative overlaps a bit with something called BIG. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, that is a, a subgroup of the IEEE uh, blockchain and healthcare group. Uh, again, some overlap there, but happy to provide introduction. Oh, that would be great. Thank you, Susan. Absolutely. Phenomenal. Hello, this is, this is Wendy, and I just wanted to share that Erica Bierbauer and I are both members of the IEEE Standards Development Working Group for Blockchain and Healthcare, and we would be happy to provide updates as needed. Um, standardization is not just for the technology, it's also for the data points, and each of the major regulatory organization agencies that oversee clinical research has published data standards, and so... Um, OHRP less, um, they're reserved mostly for disease registries, but I'd be happy for anyone interested uh, to reach out to me offline and I can connect you with some additional resources. Awesome. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and maybe jumping the gun a bit, but, uh, you know, this, this, this facet of, of standardization and understanding where our standards bodies exist may be something that we develop an ad hoc team around so that we can sort of keep tabs on this with a little bit more regularity than we have in the past, certainly. Um, as well, it, it probably would be uh, great, to, again, to expose that to membership so that, uh, you know, we would serve as a resource to, uh, to sort of redirect uh, and make uh, social connections to those folks that, uh, that are associated with these different groups. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, stepping back a little bit, bit a little bit uh, at the moment, uh, my my overall sense for where Hyperledger.org uh, sits, uh, my my gut is that we are probably less a standards body than uh, a, a group of folks developing software solutions. Uh, that doesn't does not necessarily mean we're doing it without standards considerations, uh, but uh, and, and again, this is just my sort of subjective read on it. I. I don't see anything um, inherent yet uh, or native to Hyperledger.org that is that is focused 100% uh, on standardizations. Uh, and so I, it may be just part of sort of the nature of the organization, sort of, uh, you know, that, that's just the DNA of the organization. Uh, whereas I'll, I'll just compare that to IEEE, which tends to be more standards sensitive. And so... Um, It'll be interesting to see how Hyperledger grows uh, into that, uh, if they do decide to grow into that. Um, I, I, I'll relay uh, a comment that I've heard in the past uh, as it relates to Hyperledger and Ethereum. Uh, 
suggesting that uh, Hyperledger um, tends to be more the, the, uh, the, the guys that are developing the software and Ethereum tends to be uh, more focused on setting standards. And so I don't know if that's entirely accurate, but that may be a kind of a clue to partly why we, uh, we maybe are less sort of aware or open uh, to uh, existing standards that are out there. But th that said, uh, Susan, I think you're spot on and uh, I'd, I'd love to find a way to, to sort of move forward on that uh, so that again, we can expose membership, um, our membership to, uh, to, the, to the resource of standard bodies that are out there. Well, I, I hear at Wendy's comment and, and I understand that she and Erica are, are, are much involved and that's, that's great. I'll put my hand up to the extent you wanna create an ad hoc group, maybe we can convene. Uh, offline and, and just explore the connections and, and bring some um, uh, focus to it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Susan. Uh, and in fact, uh, yeah, uh, I'm thinking Wendy uh, will, will, will probably want to be part of that uh, call and uh, perhaps Erica as well. So, uh, yes. so, so as an aside, I see someone drawing on our screen. Am I the only one seeing that? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, <laughs> Well, that fine notion, um, and and we are get, uh, kind of close to the top hour. We've got about ten minutes, so uh, I think we'll we'll call it uh, we'll call it a meeting. Uh, thanks everyone for your participation. As always, uh, a really good conversation and discussion. Uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, and uh, feel free to reach out to me. And again, we we also I always want to talk about the fact that we have our our Slack like equivalent, which is called Rocket Chat, that's available. Please make sure make sure to use that as a resource to you as appropriate. And again, you always have the option to you know contact a membership through our, our through our listserv as well. Uh, and then if you have any questions, uh, always feel free to direct them to me, and I'd be happy to to make introductions or redirect as appropriate as well. All right, any final thoughts before we close out? All righty. Well, thanks again, folks. Have a great weekend, and we will see you in two weeks. Have a great Thanks. weekend. Thank yeah, you. Great, great Thank weekend, you. everyone. Thanks. Bye.